hi guys and welcome back to my channel my name is erica and today i have for you my top five wednesday so if you don't know what top five wednesday is i will have it all linked down below in the description bar it's a goodreads group it has different topics and subjects and discussions where you can find out more information about all of that there on that link so there wasn't a specific topic or subject that was given for this week it was just a freebie so i just decided to do my favorite top five new adult books so these are a combination of duologies and series but i just decided to all group them all into one so one set of series is one another set is two and so on you get it it may be cheating a little bit but i'm gonna do it anyway so the first um, duology or set of books that I have is the Pulse Inc. Alive series by Gil McHugh and I know I said her name wrong but we're gonna move on and these books are my favorite especially the second one I always find myself going back and rereading the second one anytime I find myself going to reading slump or just need to get out of a reading slump or whatever I always 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 go back to this series and yes I will say though I had to get these through interlibrary loan and interlibrary loan takes a lot longer to get to me than with, if it was in my regular system. So I only placed book one on hold and got it first and I hated that I didn't get book two at the same time because there's a big cliffhanger at the end of book one and I needed book two. So I would recommend if you're checking these out at the library when I get both of them, you may not like the first one, but if you do, you're going to automatically have the second one and it works it's a win-win situation so that's all i want to say about that but book one is pulse no book one is collide book two is pulse and this story follows emily who's recently moved to new york with her boyfriend and her best friend olivia who already lives out there and she's also grieving the loss of her mother now because she just moved out there she doesn't really have a job or other family besides her sister but she lives in california so she decides to kind of get herself acclimated with new york she gets herself a job at this local restaurant that does catering and delivery and one day all the delivery guys are all out and someone calls in for delivery and she decides to go ahead and do it since it's not that far it's in walking distance from where she lives i'm sorry not live, where she works at and she decides to go there well when she gets there there's this guy named gavin who it turns out that that's who the order is for and he instantly falls for her and that's all i'm going to say about what the story is about now it does have a lot of tropes in here that a lot of people don't like like insta love and that's like the main one, Insta Love. But I felt like this was written so good because of Emily's situation. I felt like it was written really good and that's why I really liked it. This story also focuses on mental abuse, um, just a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of physical. Um, I will just put that out there because I know it's like a trigger warning. And um, basically about loving yourself more whenever you in a toxic relationship or something toxic in your life how you need to kind of sit back and recognize it and decide that you're going to love yourself more and back away from that and that's the story in general what is really about and it's about um self-healing all of that things all written into one and so that's one of the parts where i felt like that trope kind of was written really good into it as well the second one collide no pose i won't say um really won't talk about that one because that will give a lot away about what happens in the first one so i want to say it's if you like if you want to try them and you're checking them out get both of them you may not like it and you may will but you'll at least have both of those as well so I love it and then gavin he's like the perfect book boyfriend like he's like my all-time favorite book boyfriend for is in the new adult world yes my next favorite is also a duology and um but i only really like the first one so i'm not going to talk about the second one the second one i'll just name it so you'll know what it's about but the first one is called frigid and the second one is scorched and they're all 
best friend. But like I said, I didn't really like um, Scorch as much as I loved Frigid. But this is about Jennifer Armantrout, who also wrote the Way For Me series. Unfortunately, this didn't make it onto my list, but it's still one of my favorites. So Frigid has a trope that I absolutely love. It's your best friend. You fall in love with your best friend. That's one of the tropes that I really love. And um, it's just so, so good. So this story follows Sydney and Kyler, who are best friends. They've been best friends since they were little, and they both attend the same university. Well, they're all going to go to this the mountains for a winter break, and it's going to be them, their two best friends, and some other friends as well. And so Ky Kyler and Sydney decide to go together to the mountains, and everybody else meets them there. Well, a big winter storm happens, and it causes the rest of the group to skip, to stay where they are, and Kyler and Sydney are already at the cabins. Kyler, no, I'm sorry, Sydney already has a huge crush on Kyler, but she feels like it's not returned. And so things kind of, you know, come out between the two of them. And the thing about it is that there, it's just those two and they're stuck at the cabin together. So this story is very character driven versus plot driven because the, nothing really happens outside of the cabin until the very very end so it's really written in the characters also um it is told from each one of them point of view so you get a lot to see what's going on in each other's head especially kyler's i love kyler a lot and the um the main focus of this well i won't say the main focus but like the other side parts of the story is kind of obvious what's going on but um, we're just going to throw that part to the side. We don't care about that. We just care about Kyler and Sydney. So my next set of books are the Stage Dive series by Kylie. Not Kylie. Yeah, Kylie Scott. She's a really great author. And she also has a Dive Bar series. But that one, I liked her Stage Dive series better than her Dive Bar. And this consists of lead, lick, play, and bass. And they're all a part of a band. And each book tells each band member's story. And I just, I love it. It's like, I love it so much. But this story just sort of really focuses on each band member's, their personal problems, the dilemmas that they have, the um, different issues and social problems that they have as well and of course you have your your um their female love interest into it and it how it just plays out all together if you like rock star romances these are perfect i hardly ever would gravitate towards them it's not that um it's just not that it wasn't my cup of tea it's just something that I never really just went for until i saw these and i got these off overdrive and these are really great and i love them and I would recommend these a lot. So Rockstar Romances are now my top favorite because of this series as well. And so, um, yeah, you should totally check these out as well. The next book that I have is Spinning Out by Lexi Ryan. And these are the Black Hawk Boys series, I believe. This one is the first one. Now, this series I have not finished. I believe I have two more to go. But they're just so good. I had to put them on this list. And this one, this series has a lot of, it follows football players. That's really the majority of what I can say about it. Because the synopsis are very vague. And there's so much going on within the books. And you just, I would just recommend just going into it very blindly. I will say Spinning Out is the first one, and out of all of them, that's my favorite one that I've read. And it's just filled with, it's bittersweet, it's filled with love, it's filled with hate, it's filled with different types of emotions going on. You're going to cry, you're going to laugh, you're going to be upset, you're going to feel everything while reading this series. And I really love that with this series. And it's just that it has you, it, it makes you feel like you're right there with the characters and you're going through what they're going through with the characters and whatnot and there's also a playlist at the end of each book and i listen to them and the playlist fits so perfectly with these stories and i just i love them i know i just said about all of them 
but I absolutely love them. And this also is told from dual perspectives, which is like my favorite thing when you have a story like this that have so much going on. I really want to know what is going on in both of the characters' heads or if it's multiple, what is going on in their heads. And that way you can kind of understand them all just a little bit better. So I love this series as well. And I am going to finish this this year um unfortunately my library doesn't have these so i have to buy them off of amazon but i think they're like 3.99 so check out amazon if you like to get these or your lo your local library may have these as well so the next book i have is archer's voice by mia sheridan and this book is just like the last um book i just talked about spinning out this one is also filled with a lot of emotions. You're going to laugh, you're going to cry, you're going to get upset, you're going to... Everything, you're going to fill it with this. And this one is the only standalone that's on here. And this story follows Archer, who um, was in a really bad accident. And he... Um, I forgot what it's called, but it messed up his vocals. So he's not able to talk. And when he found out about the surgery to fix it, it was too late and permanent damage had already happened and he couldn't do it so he had to learn asl and so he would live with his uncle and they were like the town recluse they really didn't involve himself with the town and it's really sad because his relatives are kind of prominent people within the community that he lives in and so archer just basically stays to himself especially after his uncle passed away and then in comes our main character, Bree, who is also running from a horrible past. And she meets Archer basically at a grocery store. She spilled things out of her bag and he was there and he helped her, you know, get her stuff together. And so she's, she's automatically drawn to him and she starts asking around who he is and come to find out on her way home, she will always pass the house that he lived in. And it just kind of takes off from there, you know, he see he knows that she passes by his house and he makes it known by being outside when she comes and they just come together and what I like about it is they start off being friends and then eventually it does eventually involves well, evolve into something more. And this story, like I mentioned in my Pulse and Goliath series, this series is also about um, not depending on other people for your happiness, self-love, and, you know, anytime you're in something toxic, it's, it's not healthy for you, and it's best for you just to get away from that. So that's what this story is also focused on. And like I said, you want to feel everything. You want to be mad, upset, you want to cry, you want to laugh, all of these. That's all for my Top 5 Wednesday. If you participate in Top 5 Wednesday, comment down below so I can see them and we can talk about your books as well. Thank you all about this